how many people were able to attend uh, our TA's review session? No. Um, okay, I hear it was very helpful. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, above and beyond the call of duty. Uh, there is so much material in this course, it's kind of mind-boggling. Um, uh, I imagine that you're all studied or, or uh, you might have some holes and some of you might prefer to just, let's just take it, let's not do any of this song and dance beforehand. Um, so I'm open to different possibilities here. Um, let's start with questions. Who has questions that um, are relevant to what you're about to face? Give you a chance to think. Yes. When you compare and contrast, do you think those terms are different? It's always useful to be specific. And when I, uh, and when I say be specific, those four specific ways that uh, architecture means what it means and does what it does are useful things. If you're fishing for, let's see, how does it? It's useful to use those because that's how you make sure you're being specific. For example, if you say, um, uh, let's go back to the example I used in class last time, um, the construction of invisibility of Pretoria uh, union buildings uh, it's useful to be specific about how it does it. Um, so if you say the union buildings uh, monumentalize uh, the, the reconciliation between the Boers and the English, well, how does the architecture do that? What is the specific strategy, architectural mechanism by which it does that? So you will score some points for saying something that general, but to really fulfill uh, the, the, the goals of that question and really respond in a specific way, you would need to say something like, uh, by uh, embodying the English in one way and the Boers, the Dutch speaking Boers in another way, the Afrikaners speaking uh, Boers in another way, and then connecting them with the central arc of the building and plan, they are monumentalizing the reconciliation between these two warring factions bringing to, to end and celebrating the inauguration of the Union of South Africa. So there's a difference between those two responses. Um, a related question you could ask is, when you say compare, does it always have to be uh, a similar move? No. I don't say contrast in the way I worded the question, but um, because I was going to make this point, that a comparison isn't always these two are the same. The comparison is often this is doing one thing, this is doing the opposite thing. So what would do the opposite of the Pretoria Union buildings in terms of uh, constructing invisibility? Morocco. Which one? Morocco. Morocco. Is that one? Uh, so yes, in Morocco, in Casablanca, there are actually uh, Leoti's uh, larger project is to construct the visibility of the Moroccan people and acknowledge, embrace, uh, and the architects have those little sketches, they're studying vernacular architectural motifs and moves and the shading devices. And so they are carefully studying the vernacular cultural expression of the architecture and reproducing it albeit on top of a totally French uh, urban formation, totally French uh, architectural set of building types, totally French um, relationship between uh, uh, governance and society. Uh, and so that's, that's, a, a, that's how one might um, go into the details by being specific about they, they studied the vernacular form and they replicated it, such as the, the masonry archways in the mid-block uh, that uh, starts to replicate the souk formation of the vernacular, even though it's very much a French modern housing project with light and air. Uh, you know. 
Now, one could do the opposite uh, in the Casablanca example of echo shards. Uh, that last slide we looked at where it was very much like Corbusier's white city, totally cubic uh, housing and only housing as far as the eye can see. Uh, uh, the very opposite, the epitome of erasing, creating invisibility. So that's another one that would be available to you if you were to face a question. Other questions? Yes? So you're saying that we can either find an example that does the same thing or one that doesn't Yes. So when I say compare, in those last, the last four questions you get, it will say, in about 100 words, and I'm sorry I said 50 words before, but it, I think I think you guys have been writing way more than 100 words, haven't you? Um, OK. I recommend, well, you know better than me what strategies work and don't work. You do it all the time. But um, uh, in about 100 words, uh, compare the ways this building and some other site operates to do this thing. And the comparison can be it does it the same way, it does it the opposite ways. But it should be dramatically similar or dramatically opposite. If it's kind of, then it's a weaker uh, response. Does that make sense? And again, just to reiterate, um, it is perfectly acceptable for you to only select uh, from, so this, this is the only question that is open-ended where you are actually identifying a site and using it in your response. The other, all the other questions, the site is given to you. But here's one where you can identify a site. It is perfectly acceptable if you limit yourself to the 40, let's see, and like, yeah, so 40 sites that are the primary sites of the, of the course. That's fine. However, there is advantage to selecting something off that menu because then you have more choices and you can uh, be more effective in creating a dramatic similarity or dramatic difference and not be reaching so far because you have a larger menu to choose from. The whole goal of this you experience it as, you know, I've got to take tests at school. This is all about getting grades and, and being a successful person in life. Fine. I don't see it that way. This, the whole reason, I just so we're clear, my motivation is to help incentivize you to be your, take ownership of this material. Be selective. Don't memorize everything, although I'm sure some of you are doing this because that's who you are. Um, but my recommendation is don't do that. Don't take my word for it. Edit this course. Don't learn everything. Learn the things that make sense to you and be critical, be skeptical. And when I finish presenting something, you should be saying, well, that didn't work. That doesn't make any sense. I don't, what was that? That one worked. This one didn't work for me. So that's how you should be approaching this. You should be taking ownership. This is your course. And you should be taking ownership of some of the materials and rejecting others that don't work for you. And those ones that you take ownership of, you are going to be able to respond to questions like this on this test and on the final exam in a much more effective manner because you own it. It's yours. It resonates with you, and you're going to do it. Yes? Can you choose examples that you haven't covered, like what's we did for our Friday assignments or what was being like, visited? And... Yes. Ownership. Did everyone hear that question? Can we choose examples that haven't been covered in lecture? I would so love that. That would make me so happy. That would be a lovely thing, a lovely <laughs> gift for you to give me. Um, because I'm a little worried about how we make this transition uh, from the passive reception of content to take to actively going out, grabbing it, making it do what you need it to do, and make it work for you. And where you're just zooming past me and us, and we're just saying, "Bravo, go, go and do that." Other questions.
Does that help to go over things like that? Okay, I'm not, I want to um, give you plenty of time, so I'm going to do this very quickly. Um, I am human. So I'm, we, we've been presenting it in reverse chronological order. Let's now, in an act of taking ownership of the material, do it in the right order. Thank God. Let's do it from the beginning to the end. I think that's what we're doing here. So we're going back to Amsterdam, the corn exchange, the costumes. How does it do what it's doing? It is a, what is it doing? It is a machine for generating trust. You, and uh, for moderating behavior, you dress properly, you don't swear, you don't spit, you stand at the column where the commodity identification uh, is associated with the commodity that you're interested in, and then you don't simply take that piece of paper's uh, word for it, you go check the cargo. You look at it, you, you feel it, you check it on the boats, so this is located where it is, uh, so that it can operate as a machine of, of accountability to back up those bonds. And then there's the much larger system of international exchange based on boats, minimizing the friction of transfer. So the canal is next to the street, is next to the, to the house, factory, warehouse. And that is replicated on both ends of the, the system, which brings us to Dutch East Indies Batavia, the sugar warehouse, where... The same boats are taking things off of the ships, the uh, Indiamen um, uh, schooners, and bringing it in or out of the sugar warehouse. Where, and it's a military protected geometry, uh, as we'll continue to see as we go into um, water-based colonial exchange. Uh, and the, the, uh, inside this house, there are the Baroque gateways that um, are signaling status and hierarchy, and who has access to what spaces, which is the theme of how the larger space of Batavia works itself, where the pass laws uh, that we saw in South Africa are operating not through pass books, but through the clothing controlled by the sumptuary codes, even to today, when an expensive car and a less expensive car arrive at the same time at an intersection, right now, every day, all day long in Jakarta, the less expensive car yields to the more expensive car. Uh, the visual orders, uh, uh, well, no, this isn't visual orders. This is the, now the London East India Company. On the London side of things, all kinds of operations are happening. Uh, the colonial, the downtown London is being transformed uh, as the home office of all these operations overseas, as you see in, in the distribution of all these offices, and part of the prestige, the rise of the Anglican Church, in, in competition with what we saw at Bramante's uh, and Bernini's and everybody in between them, uh, St. Peter's in Rome, uh, and causing a bit of anxiety about whether uh, the Anglican Church is getting a bit too Roman. Um, then we head to uh, Calcutta, where we see the similar hierarchy of space expressed in the veranda, where depending on clothing and identification, uh, there's different spatial access to different parts of the veranda of the, the Dutch. And these have gone out of order. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to have to correct this system. But um, we were just talking about uh, St. Peter's. Uh, and here we see St. Peter's Square, the image that many of you analyzed. And the operation of visual lines of access that exemplify power and this overarching order imposed on the fabric of the city um, at multiple scales uh, as a strategy for taking ownership and control of uh, the city and the larger landscape. And we see that strategy uh, playing out in St. Petersburg very explicitly. Uh, Peter the Great wanted to transform what had been this very Eastern-oriented uh, inheritance of the Mongols and really Europeanize it, so he creates a new capital, lays it out uh, according to the logic of these visual orders, placing the, the national, the new navy, the new naval power at the center of that hierarchy as the basis for asserting um, Russia's 
uh, membership in the advanced nations of Western Europe, civilized through Baroque expressions throughout the fabric of the city um, that, that accrue over the course of several centuries. Um, and then finally we get to Paris and the, uh, the most clear uh, transformation of a city for the purposes of uh, imposing an order that uh, makes it possible for the new middle class, the rising middle class, to enjoy a modern lifestyle. So the theme of the capital of modernity and the, the desire of the bourgeoisie to uh, stroll, to see and be seen uh, in the fabric of Paris. And then finally, this similar, um, the similar strategy of imposing visual order uh, not always for the same end goals. And that's one of the themes we're seeing throughout. We see similar forms, similar formal spatial arrangements in support of different institutional regimes. And so here we see a colonial regime, very different from Paris or um, the Catholic, the Holy Roman Empire, uh, in order to legitimize, uh, again, uh, as in... Uh, uh, Casablanca to acknowledge, at least in the symbolic uh, embellishments of the classical orders, with the Indo-Saracenic signals of of uh, acknowledgement of the indigenous cultural uh, expressions, and here we see this extreme imposition of geometric order, uh, all centered on the secretariat complex, the government complex. And the bungalow neighborhoods are organized uh, around that central, uh, that central focal point in a very carefully controlled hierarchy of bungalows uh, with those verandas of very carefully controlled hierarchy uh, domestically. Um, we get to the Crystal Palace in London. Again, back in London, the, uh, the exposition uh, the international exposition of the brilliant production of the industrial output of the new factory system in London, and nothing more clearly expressive than this building technology of the metal building with mass-produced uh, glass uh, panels set into it, uh, expressing the order of the uh, colonial uh, arrangement of things on the interior and the layout and the disposition and entering into this debate, this ongoing debate over the centuries between the moral Gothic and uh, the, in this case, the contrast with the, the new factory system and the moral de decrepitude that that um, threatens. Moving us to Shanghai, where uh, we see the Scottish banking interests uh, uh, financing the opium trade uh, and uh, surviving to the present uh, of uh, laundering drug money uh, and transforming this coastline from a port to a port with warehouses to the headquarters of those operations to the banking and customs house to uh, a demonstration on the skyline of this international center which uh, in the contemporary uh, condition of Pudong is both uh, Sinoizing it, making it, taking on China is taking ownership of this new and asserting its status as a, a member of the global city uh, club. Uh, back to Casablanca, where the French, uh, as they after their experience in Indochina, experiment uh, under Lyotet's uh, idea of techno cosmopolitanism with uh, modern French building types organized in a modern French uh, urban order but through expressions of local indigenous uh, culture and customs. And you see this uh, elaborate uh, configuration uh, in contrast with Eco Shard's uh, uh, Siam team, uh, Siam Athens charter arrangement of housing, only housing on the outskirts. Uh, similar issues come up in uh, McLean Ponce's uh, Bandung Institute of Technology where uh, Dutch technical achievements uh, rendered in the spirit of the arts and crafts movement in terms of the uh, expression of materiality and form uh, does a masterful job of melding subnational vernacular expression without giving dominance to any single one. 
the most carefully avoided one being the Javanese because of the threat of Javanese dominance uh, and the under the con in the context of Dutch colonial ethical policy of maintaining the colony forever uh, they wanted to kind of negotiate and even out the, the conflicts and competitions internally uh, the debate with um, Schumacher uh, who is designing in the mode of Frank Lloyd Wright's Imperial uh, Hotel in Tokyo. Uh, he uh, turns around, he does a jujitsu move, the weakness of the rafters that Schumacher ridicules is here taken as an advantage and identified with further research to be actually an extremely sophisticated technical move um, that is a far more expressive dynamic architectural thing like, and then we, that Fast forward to the bamboo architecture of Bali today. Um, shifting to Zanzibar, the, uh, the strategy of Bargash bin Said is to beat the Europeans to the punch by modernizing more dramatically and more successfully than they could ever uh, impose a modern order, thus reducing the pressure for European colonial domination. Uh, he brilliantly also combines it with the three-story uh, Swahili coast merchant uh, expression of prestige and order, uh, but on a, on a giant scale, uh, but uh, resonating with the local practices, even though he himself is from the, the Sultanate of Oman, uh, but really uh, managing and negotiating between the Swahili culture and the European culture to create this remarkable uh, House of Wonders uh, with the veranda, the chandeliers, the electricity, the elevator, uh, the gadgets, uh, the microscopes, telescopes, uh, and the extreme uh, arrangement of hierarchy of space and the transformation of the Port of Zanzibar with new building types, baths, rail, road, infrastructure, uh, flood controls, and the like. Um, Sir Herbert Baker's uh, union buildings in Pretoria, uh, like as I won't go over it again, but bringing together the English and the Afrikaans cultures in a union of, of South Africa while constructing, through omission, the invisibility of everyone else uh, in the majority, reinforced through the establishment of the townships where the streets have no names, uh, and thus the identity suppression of, of those elements. The uh, Chicago Union Stockyards, uh, becomes as much of a tourist attraction as the 93 uh, Columbian Ex Exposition. Uh, the, the grid of the pens are a microcosm of the grid of the Jeffersonian ordering of the continent, uh, facilitating the rapid commodification of land and the quick transformation of this landscape into one of the world's most productive uh, commodity ex extraction machines uh, up to that point in time with all the railroad lines uh, bringing those goods to Chicago from where it is shipped out uh, in refrigerated meat cars um, after the early start with the canal system. Speaking of canals, the Panama Canal uh, is a project of the United States taking over from the French after their failure, even despite their successes with the Suez Canal, an assertion of geopolitical control over a key choke point uh, of the naval waterways that are the key to uh, the U.S. Uh, the <laughs> dominance in the 20th century in the, in the world wars. Um, and the importance of the architecture to impose this taming influence that we are uh, civilized. Uh, these are civil actions, even though there, there's a strong military component uh, driving the whole thing. Um, a f the fascinating example in Taipei of the Meiji Restoration moving to rapidly, again similar to uh, Zanzibar, to rapidly uh, Europeanize and legitimize uh, Japan's ambitions to be the first Asian dominant colonial imperial power and shopping around for an architectural uh, expression of that power and choosing the aesthetic movement style, which was generated under uh, extremely different conditions of, of transcending. They wanted to transcend this Gothic versus classical debate and just do art for the sake of art. They turn it into uh, an embodiment of imperial uh, right to rule uh, in all of their holdings. First uh, uh, in Tokyo uh, with Tokyo Station, 
uh, and then in Seoul, um, Manchuria, Taipei, and as they expand uh, leading up to their attack on uh, Pearl Harbor, here we see that architectural expression, the costumes again, um, and Commodore Perry's uh, incursion into Edo Harbor in 1853, uh, the classic example of gunboat diplomacy. Um, again, with this idea, the theme of nationalisms, the Bauhaus uh, coming on the heels of the uh, Crystal Palace uh, exposition, the need for Germany to assert its uh, industrial uh, might uh, in the face of competition from um, the British Isles, uh, it, it moves into, under the influence of the modern movement, this idea of the new objectivity, the new subjectivity of space, uh, and to create objects of everyday life that represent a liberation of humans from the prior dark spaces um, of oppression, of ornamentation, and the cleaning of everything to uh, the white walls and lifting of the human spirit, freeing the human spirit for a modern expression that would ultimately be lead to the shining civil social order of uh, new empowered free human beings uh, and exemplified by the stop Cronin at the center of the towns um, uh, from Bruno Tout and the glass chain groups. Uh, visual expressions uh, come up uh, during World War I and in the interwar period. Um, growing straight out of the German architectural uh, movement uh, after World War I, um, Ataturk uh, leads uh, Turkey uh, really in a very authoritarian move, compels Turkey to join the modern world by shedding the fez, shedding the robes, uh, not that different from Peter the Great's move in St. Petersburg, to become less Eastern and more Western, and um, most clearly and powerfully exemplified by the architecture. Part of it was the liberation of women uh, out from under the veil. Uh, and here we see a German woman's uh, girls' school extension um, that is very much a part of that, um, uh, the epilogue being a little bit of a shaky ground today in Turkey. Uh, then back to Germany with, um, here we see the uh, exposition in Paris where we see Soviet Union on one side and Germany on the other um, in their expressions of national power in the context of the rising uh, power of Nazi, the Nazi party and their campaign, their two-sided two campaign of uh, ethnic cleansing of the, the concentration camps and this glorious 1,000-year rule of the Third Reich uh, where the architecture is designed for its monumentality and its ruin value. What will it look like in a thousand years? It will be a glorious ruin to rival that of Rome. Um, a totally uh, counter uh, national expression is the Bolshevik Revolution at the end of World War I, where uh, the Soviet Union is born uh, by overthrowing the Tsar system that Peter the Great established. Uh, it's nice to go forward in time and be able to say things like that. Uh, and the, the powerful expression of the form of these buildings that was considered to be at the heart of the Soviet movement, this powerful diagonal dynamic force. Uh, so the graphics, the architecture, the human body uh, of the workers and the human body of Lenin uh, uh, himself. Um, moving on to, again, uh, in the aftermath of World War II, the reconstruction of Frankfurt, the old city, using this strategy coming out of uh, Jossick and Woods, Kendallis, uh, Jossick and Woods, uh, the protégés of Corbusier, uh, creating uh, a map building in the spirit of the Free University of Berlin. As the, the it gets incorporated into the winning competition, as a foundation for the reconstruction of the historic city as an emulation of what had been there before the bombing. Uh, here we see a view that combines uh, the very old Roman ruins, the very new technical uh, town hall of Frankfurt, and not quite visible, but the, 
the we saw many slides of the replication of the historic buildings uh, built right out of the historical photos. The Aswan Dam project, um, uh, Nasser, the the um, leader of uh, newly uh, democratic Egypt, uh, negotiating between the two Cold War powers, uh, Soviet Union and the U.S., uh, playing one against the other. Uh, to finally get uh, a tremendous uh, gift of the Soviet Union to build the Aswan Dam, the Western powers scrambling to figure out what they would do uh, to compete uh, without giving up on Egypt. Uh, and so they compete at the level of the identity of the heritage and the birth of UNESCO, the rise of UNESCO as the negotiators of heritage, while this monument celebrates the, um, the Arab-Soviet friendship um, uh, exemplifying the, the, this alliance uh, in the hopes of a long relationship of uh, Egypt as part of the Soviet bloc. And here we see the related um, convoca uh, convocation. There's Nasser <coughs> and Nehru uh, at the Bandung Non-Aligned Movement Conference where the third world was born. Uh, first world being the Western allies, the second world, uh, the Soviet bloc, uh, the communist world, and the third world being the uh, newly emergent uh, so-called independent post-colonial nations of the world. And in that context, you have the alliance between China and the Soviet Union, very warm relationship for a very short time, in which the Soviet Union brought East German technical prowess into the construction of this factory as an exemplification of the very widespread Don Wei system of total control of life where the communal living of the workers here, they work together in the factory and they have uh, communal facilities including uh, eating together and this symbolic municipal ad administrative building um, tying it all together. Families, family, nuclear family ties are weakened in the context of larger communal ties. Um, we move to the North American landscape we see Frank Lloyd Wright becoming the template for much of the suburban development. Uh, many of his innovations, including uh, the Broad Acre City Project, where he is uh, proposing a very widely, uh, thinly dispersed, low-density uh, uh, sprawl across the continent. Um, and his influence uh, in Europe being felt very deeply at the core of multiple modern movements, in this case the de Stijl of the Shorter House, um, <clears throat> back to North America, we see this uh, architectural visualization of the future of New York City in the year 1960, which um, some say was prescient, but some say it set the blueprint for what was yet to come, anchored on the uh, urban highway system and the interstate highway system, uh, which became uh, a model uh, indirectly for Robert Moses and his pioneering of using extreme authority uh, for the transformation of the Tri-City area, um, which came to pass, uh, which is very closely related to the new spatial condition, uh, in, especially in North America, uh, of the automobile, uh, carefully studied by um, uh, Robert Venturi and Denise Scott Brown in, uh, in their learning from Las Vegas, that this new spatial uh, formal arrangement that accommodates the visual experience uh, at high speeds from the automobile uh, that uh, leads to a very, is part of an extreme makeover, uh, much bigger than any architect could design, uh, thus putting uh, the role of architectural design in a larger context where uh, it really doesn't matter, as the Dutch have pointed out, uh, that the... Um, and this, this automobile space has spread uh, all over the world and is still being very aggressively, enthusiastically embraced um, uh, elsewhere. And we see this kind of big road architecture that uh, was theorized and identified uh, by Venturi and Scott Brown. And we see it coming into uh, being in uh, other places of the world uh, exemplified by this. Yes, question. It is a giant form that you see from far away. 
and you immediately recognize it because it is so striking. It doesn't look like anything else. It's as if the architect was saying, how is this building going to be experienced? It's going to be experienced from ring road number three, and it's going to be experienced at high speed, and it's going to be experienced, well, except for the traffic jams, uh, but it's going to be, so it's a very much a strategy, a formal strategy that is informed by uh, the big sign architecture of Las Vegas and the automobile landscape of North America. Is that, yes? Is the pattern one that's supposed to No, the patterning is an outward expression of a structural strategy for this extreme cantilever. Don't try this at home. It's very hard to build a skyscraper bent into a pretzel like that. And uh, this is part of the larger strategy of the largest movement of humanity in human history from the rural countryside, not because they're being pulled into the city, but because they're being forced off the land, thrown into these high-rise buildings, uh, if and when they ever are occupied. Uh, they can't afford to pay the electric bill for all their new appliances, and so this is how they continue to do their laundry. Um, on a completely different note, the, mo the uh, modern movement formal formalism was uh, triggered and anchored by the work of, Frank, uh, of Le Corbusier, especially this building, which becomes uh, a, sacred, a sacred reference point for generations of architects, uh, the Whites uh, of New York City, the New York Five, um, uh, and um, very much influenced the trajectory of, of high design, high modern, formalist architecture in the 20th century. Um, uh, a more grounded bit of work uh, is also Corbusier's um, The Unité d'Habitation, which had a profound experience on the design of uh, social housing, or as we call it in this country, public housing, um, that and uh, in a related monumental project of the new capital of um, two different provinces at the present Haryana and um, uh, in uh, northern India, <clears throat> also related to Brasilia, on this high modern formalist uh, uh, in, in agenda, and we see it starting to shift in the work of Previ, uh, the Previ experimental housing uh, project in Lima, Peru. Yes. <clears throat> Probably, but we're not going to get it. 11.45, so we should be taking our test. <laughs> Jibao Cultural Center, as an armature for vernacular cultural expression to uh, occupy that building. The high rise, the super block, um, the expression on the outside of a structural order hidden on the inside, the extraction of commodities, transforming the landscape, uh, the exuberant assertion of dramatic form in order to uh, claim ownership of global city status, uh, both in Singapore and then in uh, Pudong, Shanghai. MIT, uh, the old and the new, uh, Burj Khalifa, uh, the financialization of everything and driving uh, informality, the demographic um, explosion, and the, uh, the distribution of third world poverty, and what architects can do about it using that formalism, perhaps, in the face of the demographic explosion. Okay. Any questions as we pass out the test?